This vlog is about the MSC Fantasia. We boarded it in mid-October 2023 in Barcelona, and we'll briefly cover what we loved, what we didn't love, and to get to more specifics in some of the videos, um, you can find them on our YouTube channel. Hi, my name is Tori from the Kirk Tori Story. We sold our house in Canada so that we could travel the world by cruise ship. Our intention is that we could see the world and report to our followers about the great itineraries and different ships that are available to travel the world. So boarding the MSC Fantasia. We were assigned a window of time from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. on the day of our boarding. It was pretty easy to get there on time as we were walking from Terminal E to Terminal A in the same cruise port in Barcelona. The MSC boards and disembarks people in every single port, so it isn't like they board thousands of people at once. It was pretty quick overall and relatively pain-free. The rooms weren't ready, so we wandered around the ship for a few hours before unloading our hand luggage. One thing that we were expecting was a welcome drink and a welcome package for being gold members on this cruise line. MSC is a cruise line that matches your status with other cruise lines, like Princess Cruises, for example. And it gives you a few perks that generally show that you are a valued passenger. We never did get our welcome drink and we never did get any kind of welcome package or any information about our status match. In general, other than having a gold colored MSC card, we didn't get to embark or disembark early. We didn't get the drink that we mentioned and we didn't get any other discount or special anything. I actually did go down to the reception and ask about the welcome drink that I was told that I was getting when we booked the ship, and she said that we would get a special invitation. So that is one thing that I really found with MSC Fantasia is that they love to talk and make up stories, and they don't follow through or provide any resolution. The MSC Fantasia Balcony Stateroom, we were in room 11198, so it was on the 11th floor, room 198. The stateroom was a decent size overall. It had a queen size bed, two end tables on either side of the bed, a small desk with a chair, table, a mirror, TV, lamp, and a couch. The bed was two singles that were pushed together, which is pretty standard on cruise ships, but the two beds had a huge dip in the middle that caused both of us to slide right into the middle. So it was a challenge to actually get to our own side of the bed at night. For the most part, the room was pretty comfortable until we got new neighbors on the third day of our cruise. Sadly, this uh, ship attracts a lot of large groups of people, whether they're family or friends. Regardless, they all like to hang out on one balcony. And for us, it turned out that we were the unlucky neighbors on both sides. So we had a large balcony and our neighbors had the same style. So we noticed that all of their chairs from inside of their stateroom would come out to the balcony so that groups of six or more of them could all hang out on the balcony and talk loudly with one another and smoke. I think that the whole ship experience, especially in the privacy of our own room, would have been a lot better with a different clientele of people. This room, although we thought it was really nice, and you can see the room tour on YouTube. It was just really loud and really smoky and not really giving us a chance to unwind and relax on this cruise ship. The bathroom. Well, that was a good size and it was well lit. There was a lack of hot water on, in this room on the first day when we were in the room. We actually had no hot water. 
and I was wondering if we were going to have to change rooms as it barely got lukewarm after running the water for so long. It did get hot by day four and we were able to have our first completely hot water shower for the first time. So if you're ever staying on the ship, please note also that they do have shampoo and body soap but they do not have conditioner or lotion. So you should consider bringing that. Uh, the balcony. Our stateroom was fairly large. We purposely purchased this room because of the angle of the balcony. The glass is clear and therefore you can get an amazing view of outside from inside of your own room. What we didn't like about the balcony is what I've already stated is that the fact that it seemed that everybody on the ship smokes on their balcony. There are signs and videos all over the ship asking people not to smoke, but everybody does. We constantly had to run into our own room, close the door because it was pretty overwhelming. The ship does nothing about the smoking. They do not enforce their own rules about no smoking on balconies. And it's just unfortunate that as a non-smoker, there is almost nowhere to go without being affected by all of the smoke all over the ship. The shows and entertainment on the MSC Fantasia were definitely worth going to. The theater has a great layout, a great sound system, and really great entertainers. We like the shows overall. The MSC Fantasia has a wonderful theater with an amazing layout. Every single seat was comfortable and offered a good sight line to the stage. The sound, the sound system was really good too. The entertainers are talented and professional, and the shows were overall pretty great. I think that the shows and the theater were a highlight of the cruise on the MSC Fantasia. So what were our observations about the MSC Fantasia? Overall, there were a handful of good moments and the rest of the time was pretty uneventful and frustrating. But please keep in mind that these are only our opinions about our experience on the MSC Fantasia while on board. And it is also our opinion of coming from primarily North American ships. So number one, the MSC Fantasia is a cheap cruise and it attracts a lot of families and groups of friends traveling together because it is so affordable. We found a lot of kids on the ship and a few babies. And we also noticed that there were packs of friends all in the same room. For instance, there were a few groups of guys and men just hanging out on their balcony, calling out to people. I guess it is a pro that MSC makes it affordable for everybody to travel together. Number two, compared to other cruise lines, considering the amount of people on the ship, there are not too many fun things to do. So they do have a show and a disco at night, but honestly, unless you want to learn to dance with a, within a large pushy group or sit in a crowded hot tub, there really isn't anything much to do. Number three, one big difference between a lot of the ships that we've been on and the MSC Fantasia is that they have people embarking and disembarking at every single port. So the rotation of passengers is always different. It's a large ship and it holds over 4,300 passengers and 1,300 1, crew. Despite the size, the ship didn't feel as stable or as smooth as other large ships that we've been on. So we did feel the ship rock a lot during the day and the night. Uh, observation number four, the MSC Fantasia, in our opinion, is money hungry. So the prices of onboard merchandise seem to be more expensive than other cruise lines that we've been on. We literally just got off another ship and the exact same things in the ship stores 
were more than double in price on the MSC Fantasia. Also, MSC Fantasia will make sure that it gets its money for anything and everything. For example, one night our new waiter opened a bottle of wine for us before he realized that we wanted another kind of wine. But because he opened it, he told us he would be charged for the bottle. Obviously, I felt like we had to purchase the wine that he opened as well as the one that we ordered so that he wouldn't get penalized. But honestly, I don't think that the waiter should have felt threatened by his manager for his innocent mistake. Number five, the ship is well over 20 years old and you can tell there were many parts of the ship where it smelled like old smoke and other parts of the ship that smelled like urine. The public washrooms were never really cleaned. The restaurant chairs, if you managed to find a table, usually had crumbs or food all over them. And the overall sense, in our opinion, was that the workers were just overworked on this ship. And the vegan food on the MSC Fantasia. The MSC Fantasia has a vegan main dish in the regular menu. There's no appetizers for vegans though, but it was nice to have the vegan option on the same menu as we didn't feel out of place for asking for something different or waiting for another menu to be produced for us. Another good thing about the dinner menu is that they always had pasta and steamed vegetables available. So if you didn't like the vegan option, you could always select the pasta and the vegetables. The buffet was pretty incredible though. There were so many options for vegans that you could almost just not believe it. There was a cheeseless pizza, salad bar, a whole vegetarian section, ethnic and Mediterranean choices, and so much more. The challenge actually was trying not to overeat because you would want to sample everything. The food was really good. It was creative and it was never the same thing. They had chefs who knew exactly what we could and couldn't eat. And there was absolutely no problem at all finding anything to eat. In my opinion, the food was very good. And if I could dare say it, I think that the vegan options and food quality on the ship has been our favorite out of all ships that we've ever been on thus far. We ended up having a dinner service at a table for six and the experience was better than expected as we had exceptional table mates. The restaurant was divided into two timings and you are not allowed to be more than 15 minutes late or you would not be able to join your table. In summary of the MSC Fantasia, overall this particular ship and itinerary exceeded the capacity, so it always just felt full, packed, pushy, and not comfortable. There was nowhere to go to escape the crowds of the smoke. I guess we got what we paid for. We were in a large balcony room and the cost was 1,300 US dollars for the two of us for six days. Like I said, it would have been a lot better if we could use the balcony comfortably. And to be honest, it was the first time we were excited about leaving a ship. So we've been on other MSC cruises and liked them. So please keep in mind that this uh, vlog is really based on this particular experience with MSC Fantasia. I don't see us booking any more itineraries on this ship, but because the food and entertainment is so good, we would consider booking MSC again in the future, as long as it was on a longer itinerary to eliminate the large groups of people traveling together and on a ship that actually enforces a no smoking policy. Thank you so much for watching. Now it's time for Tori's tips regarding the MSC Fantasia. Number one, the MSC cruise line matches your status on certain cruise lines. 
not that the MSC Fantasia actually did anything in our case, but we were supposed to get a free drink, a free thermal spa visit, priority embarkation and disembarking, and a couple of other bonuses. I suppose if we were on a different ship with better customer service or on a ship with a longer itinerary, this wouldn't have been overlooked. At any rate, if you have a higher status on another cruise line, you may get lucky and actually get the perks. Number two, MSC Cruise Line also gives a bit of a discount to some service people. For example, in my case, I was a high school teacher in Toronto and all I had to do was produce evidence of this and we got a discount on the cruise. I'm not exactly sure how much the discount was, but I think it was five or 10%. Uh, tip number three, MSC uses the old style of cruise card that you cannot punch a hole into. So you should purchase a lanyard to hold your card in. Number four, the MSC uses Starlink for their internet, but in our case, the internet was very unreliable. It didn't work at all for one of our six days and it constantly booted us off. And even after calling for customer service, nobody seemed to care. They just kept saying it would turn back on soon, but it was frustrating overall. Number five, the MSC Fantasia is a heavily smoking ship. Everybody seems to disregard the rules about smoking on balconies so please, if you're coming from the North American experience, just be aware of this. They make the rules on the ship, but they do not enforce them. Number six, there is no information or any real customer service. For example, we would call down to the reception and nobody would answer, or we would go to reception and nobody would be there. We would ask questions and we would get a made up story. So we had no information about disembarking, for example, until an hour before we were supposed to leave our bags outside of the door. It was just like we were a couple of people in a hotel room and not really connected to the experience of the ship. We actually never felt so disconnected from a ship before. <laughs>